Welcome back to Level of Detail, brought to you by the Games Development Department here at Staffords University. I'm David James and I'm the Course Director for Games Design. And today I'm joined by the wonderful lecturers Jennifer Challoner and Emma Fallows, who both teach and research in areas of game art. We're going to have a chat about game art, character design, and we're going to do that whilst playing legendary game of a million ports, Skyrim. So let's just jump in, let's see what happens. And we're going from the beginning, so Jennifer, do you want to get us started? We're going, yeah, that's it. We're going, we're, we are going to go from the very beginning, because I have got a save on this, but it's so long ago I can't remember where I was, and it was probably a mess. The other thing is, I am interested, because there's a character creation bit near the start of this, isn't there? And I can't remember how deep you can go into it, but being game art lecturers, I'm expecting you to create something just, just wonderful. Just, just, this is where we smash cut to what you've made and I've got my head in my hands, but <laughs> yeah. we'll get to that bit in a minute. Well, tell me, Jennifer, Skyrim, experience with it much? Uh, Back in the day? Can I, can I play the fifth on this one? <laughs> Might have a few thousand hours locked in Skyrim at this point. Good. No, well, you know, that's more than, I mean, I, I sunk a fair bit of time into it back when it first launched, but I haven't touched it for a while. Emma? I played it when I was a teenager, so um, it's, it's a while, let's just say, but um, I do remember absolutely adoring it at the time, uh, is, but it has been a hot minute. This is like a wonderful trip down memory lane for you then. Definitely. Remember this bit? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are we missing out on any sort of story at this point? He's, he's got something to say. So as is tradition with Elder Scrolls games, you start off and you're um, in captivity, you've been arrested. It's never quite elaborated on if you're ever guilty of a crime or not. It's always left a bit ambiguous. Yeah, um, let's just go for I think we've probably done something wrong based on, <laughs> based on what I know about us. It's so interesting when you see like the artwork of older games, mm. um, because obviously when you're surrounded by like newer games all the time, um, mm. and you're kind of being like forced down your throat on like what the newest thing is, it's always nice to kind of go back and actually see like how things were done yeah. back in the day. Um, I say back in the day; it wasn't that long ago, but obviously ten years or so. It's it's really interesting seeing how different it is. Yeah, I'd say absolutely. I mean, like they've done a lot with. Well, they did a lot with what they had, right? You know, like the, sort of the, the tech limitations and stuff. The Skyrim, Elder Scrolls games have never been known for being like, the characters have never been the most beautiful things. It, you know, like, <laughs> there's been memes and things about, you know, but I, I think they got the, you know, in this one it started to look a bit more, a bit more normal, I want to say. A bit more sort of like actual people. But, yeah, I'd agree with that. <laughs> step up from oblivion, mm. that's for sure. So the art team for Skyrim had a bit of a limitation on their hands they had to work with, and that's that when they were releasing it on PC, it was going straight to Steam, which meant that you know there were no sizes on the game. You could make it as big as you wanted to. Mm -hmm. When it was releasing on the PlayStation 3, they had Blu-ray discs, so they had up to 32 gigabytes to work with. For the Xbox version, mm. they only had DVDs, which were a maximum of 8 gigabytes, so they had to fit the entire game within 8 gig. Oh. Sure, sure. Wow. Did that have a, was that through optimization then, or was it like to do with like a lot of downloading after the fact, like you know, like some launch day patches or stuff like that? Well, you have to remember this was 2011 when this game came out, so launch okay. day patches weren't really a thing back then. I did then. not remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. That's interesting. But it's not really you know, Bethesda's whole experience with porting things over. I mean, when the acquisition was announced that Microsoft were buying Bethesda. Mm -hmm. There was a chat with Todd Howard about, you know, some of his experience developing for the Xbox. Mm -hmm. And he revealed that when Morrowind came out for the original Xbox, you'd sometimes get these really long loading screens. And it's because in the background they were restarting your console to clear the RAM. <laughs> nice. Interesting. I mean, they never... It, there were still long load times in Fallout 4, weren't there? It feels like that was something they never quite mastered. but. Crash pay for a big open world sort of epic game, right? Of course. Right, we've arrived at where we're where we're going. So let's What I found really interesting about Skyrim was um, at the time 
when I wasn't sort of in a like heavily saturated environment for games mm -hmm. was um, it was one of the first games I knew of that you could play on the console and play on PC. Sure. Um, and I remember finding that really fascinating at the time mm -hmm. that you could do like this, not obviously play like duo or anything like that, but you could play it on multiple types of, of you know, uh, kind of consoles and things. Mm -hmm. And I can remember on PC the uh, discovery of being able to put mods and <laughs> oh my god, making the man a massive donut made it so much better. <laughs> I mean, it was hilarious. <laughs> we're playing on the Switch version, otherwise this would have been modded. Just let it be known. Otherwise he this, would have been a big this, donut. Yeah, yeah, we've had Macho Man as a dragon and all that kind of thing. Shrek everywhere, but like, <laughs> that, that's maybe another episode when we go back to modded Skyrim. Tell me then, you're both games are lecture, so that's what I introduced you both as anyway, so you're committed to it now. <laughs> How did you get into, Jennifer, how did you get into games art then? Well, for me, I remember when the trailer first came out for um, Ruby from mm. Rooster Teeth. And I was watching this trailer and I was just blown away by it. I thought, my goodness, this looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I wonder how they've made this. So I looked it up and sure enough, it was all done in Maya, the entire thing. And I remember thinking like, my goodness, that sounds amazing. I wonder mm. what that software looks like. And then... I sort of took a look and sure enough through my at the time college email I could get it for free. Ah, oh, awesome. So I downloaded it and of course you know, this was sort of 2012, 2013 so there wasn't really a whole lot of tutorial content out there. It was very free form mm. but that was my first dabble with 3D and I just loved it. I thought I want to keep doing this. That's awesome. Can you remember what you made? <laughs> Uh, that very first thing. <laughs> yes, it was a tutorial for building a uh, a helmet in the style of Quake. Oh, awesome! I, I mean, Quake is my cup of tea, so yeah, that's ace. That's great. <laughs> what are you am? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like um, it's a bit of a crazy story, really, because I kind of didn't know it existed when I first started like looking into like what I wanted to do. And mm. when I was sixteen, I was leaving high school, and I was told um, by my teachers, I was like, I had this form in front of me, and the question was essentially, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? <laughs> and um, yeah. I'm just saying, for anybody who gets asked that at such a young age, no, you can't answer it. Yeah. Um, and they didn't like my answer because they wanted like a vet or mm. a bin man. Um, <laughs> and I, was, I just wrote something that makes me happy. And they hated it, and yeah. um, and like they said, we need to give you another form, and I was I refused. Um, so I went on with that sort of acknowledgement that I wanted something that makes me happy, something that brings out my creativity. Mm. Um, and I can remember when I finished uh, some of my courses in like uh, A levels and things like that. I was thinking, right, okay, what what, what do I want to do next? And I remember uh, seeing a games art course at uh, a university and I thought oh my god that's yeah. that's really really cool I didn't realize that was even a thing and this is back in 2014 now no, um so it's gained over 10 years ago yeah. um and at the time this was not as well known I would say as, as nowadays mm -hmm. and I can remember wanting to go for it and then my mum was a little bit apprehensive about it because she'd never heard of it either mm -hmm. And she actually kind of um, said to me, like, don't you think that games are for boys a little bit? Like, don't you think that's kind of more of a male dominated thing? And I was like, well, now I want to do it even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, we'll so see about that. I ended up, yeah, I ended up being extremely stubborn, uh, which I always have been. And uh, I ended up going for games art and then obviously got my undergrad degree, uh, came to staffs to do my master's. Mm -hmm. And then obviously yeah, <laughs> here, here we are sitting in this chair. <laughs> yeah, amazing. No, that's fantastic. Good for you. That's awesome. Can you remember the first thing you made? The first thing I made, oh my God. That's not one of the questions on here, so I'll put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, 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 that's cool. Um, so one of the first things I, I had to make, uh, they put me in ZBrush and they were like, we want you to make a face, we want you to make a head sculpt. Uh -huh. It looked like a chicken, so I went with it and made it into a chicken and they were just like, uh, not what we expected, but the creativity is going yeah. there. <laughs> and uh, I don't even know if I have that file to existence, but no. if I do, it's going straight on my art station. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Big fan of that. Jennifer. I see that you've made us a Tyrannosaurus Rex in a T-shirt. Yeah. See, <laughs> well, no one stopped me so far. No, so thought... in my peripheral vision, I could see it going on, but here we are. I mean, we're, we're in it now. It's cute. We are. See, I thought, given that no one wants to stop me, I no. can make the official Staffs Uni Wizard Lizard. Oh, my days. Nice. There we go. Well, we've got to keep it now. <laughs> <laughs> Mascot. Okay. Right, yeah. marketing's here. We'll have a word, see what we can do. Um, right. Hair? What else? I mean, that looks good to me. I, I feel like we need to be a dinosaur. I think that's just... 
That's all good. Going. Have you done a bit where you pick your class and like what? You don't do that in Skyrim. You just sort of build it as. Oh play. yeah, you do. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Name. So. Name it. Prisoner. <laughs> Don't call it that. Yeah, no, I am going to call it Wizard Lizard. Wizard Lizard is fine. No, I think that's amazing. Wizard, if it lets us have that many characters, then... 26, we can make it fit. That's fine. <laughs> Wizard Lizard. There Wizard you go. Wizard Lizard. I like it. Perfect. And if you want to like, throw the, uh, the stuff you need Twitter handle in there, it's what? Right, nah, fine. Okay. <laughs> so, so, right, go. So... I did, it's not that I forgot. I mean, the game builds, doesn't it, this game? It, build, it builds up to it, but it does take a bit before anything happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, don't want to spoil it. There is a dragon in a minute, and not the one that we are with the T-shirt on. There's very much a more traditional dragon flying around, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that bit in a moment. You mentioned, and you, you both mentioned, actually, the art direction of this. You know, and this, like, again, you know, this, uh, a bit of post-process there. That like, doesn't look too bad, right? It's, and again, it's on the Switch, so we're grateful for what we've got. But, um, Jennifer, when you think of art direction, what is, like, your best, your favourite? I was going to say what's the best example if you had to tell someone about it, but just tell me about what's your favourite art direction in the game. For myself, I think one of the things that I like to see the most is a strong sense of stylization. Mm -hmm. And that's just more personal preference because, you know, I understand that some people gravitate t more towards realism. For myself, if I, I think if a game's got a very distinct visual style to it, it makes it far more memorable, it makes it far more charming, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to sell people on the concept. For sure, for sure. Es especially because, as you can see from this, this game was meant to be realistic for the time. Uh -huh. It's not aged particularly well, it never really does, <laughs> so... That's a good. That's absolutely fair. What's a good example of that though for you? Like, get that a game that, that's got a good stylization. So, I mean, you know, one you've already played on this channel. If you take a look at a game like Fortnite or Overcooked, both of those games they already look very distinct. You'd recognise them from a glance. His head's off. It is. Yeah. yeah. So I forgot that. Bit I happened. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my. Well, I, I don't think he's in the story anymore. <laughs> so, Are you so, sure? Well, yeah, I mean. He, I, I also, you know, disclaimer, didn't finish Skyrim, so if he does come back, all power to him. I mean, to come back from that. <laughs> I mean, he maybe walks it off. Uh, no, awesome. No, awesome. What about yourself, what about yourself Em? Um, sort of games with... Uh, you know, what's your favourite game artistically or aesthetically? Oh, I, I have one hands down, and I'd probably say Life is Strange. Sure. That, I find... I, I just adore the fact that they have such a strong art style, because I think... When you think about stylization, um, I think it's really easy to assume like a, a sort of like one category of art style. Mm -hmm. And I find that Life is Strange is, is hands down its own style. And I, I adore that. I like the, the softness of the textures. I like the simplicity, mm -hmm. but then there's levels of detail that are really high mm -hmm. to really counter it. And I find that that works really, really well as a balance. Awesome. Um, I find with Skyrim, it's just like so gritty and it's so noisy. Yeah. Um, and I think that isn't necessarily my type of style. I can appreciate that it has a strong style though. And that's like kind of like that on the other end of the scale. You no, know what I mean? For sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. I haven't got that again, so I'm going to this from not being an artist. So I just like, oh yeah, it's got really high res and it looks realistic. <laughs> like, so I've got very little artistic eye, so don't ask me. Um, it's kicking off now, it is. isn't it? It's kicking off. It might have been a mistake to let me start this because I'm just going to metagame this and skip past most That's of fine. the early let's, game. That's fine. Let's get I'm cool with that. There's absolutely a point in Skyrim near the start where you where you're allowed to do things other than run around <laughs> like, <laughs> and watch people get their heads cut off. Um, Are we going with the Stormcloaks or with the Imperials? Dealer's choice. Surprise me. I don't mind. Good choice, fair enough. Whatever gets us quick to like sort of punching a wolf to get to death or whatever Skyrim normally involves. <laughs> I mean, that happens in a minute or two, doesn't it? You're both involved then in um, uh, sort of like interviewing and looking at the portfolios of potential students, or, or you have been in the past. So just give me, tell me, um, go on, you start, tell me a little bit about what you look for in a, a games art student or someone who wanted to join us here? I think um, half of it is skill and half of it is the person, sure. um, honestly. Um, I think uh, I definitely try to get a vibe for who they are as a person. Like, I think if somebody comes in and they're super determined, really motivated, passionate, mm. um, I'm obviously going to favour that 
um, along with obviously a, a good portfolio mm -hmm. um, because I feel like it's somebody that would you know really suit their role and obviously when you're looking at people that could potentially go into the games industry you just want to type kind of get a feel for them and then obviously you know if you can get a really good vibe that they'd work well as a team like they'd work well as an artist um and they're a good person obviously that that's a massive favor for me i mean obviously when it comes to your art um i would definitely look for an art station portfolio um i think from a more, like sort of you know specific perspective um you definitely want to see that they've got a nice range in their portfolio portfolio but there also isn't anything wrong with having specialties and having like someone someone who really really loves doing characters as long as they're open-minded with the fact that you're going to be doing a degree that has a range um you can obviously specialize to an extent but it is really good for a degree to be able to push their boundaries and, and learn different things so i think i'd be a little bit worried if somebody came in and went i'm a characterized and i'm only doing characters because i'd be like well that isn't really what your degree is about. Your degree is about trying to push what your skill set is, mm. trying to learn different things. So I'd want somebody who's open-minded and obviously really excited to learn new things by yeah. coming to uni. And they will have the time to focus on something eventually, won't they? As well, yeah. like you know, once they've expanded, once they've learned all the you know all, all the additional things that go with it. That's awesome. What about yourself, Jennifer? Like, what what would you look for? Anything sort of different or additional to that? I'd say that the biggest thing I could recommend really uh, is be constantly willing to learn new things mm -hmm. because this industry, it adapts and it evolves very quickly. You know, over the span of a few months, a new technology can be released and it can completely change the way you work. Mm -hmm. And at any point, you need to be willing and prepared to make those changes and learn those new methods. So if you are the type of person who likes to get stuck in your ways and always work in the same way, you're going to be miserable working in games art. Yeah, yeah There's no yeah. way around it. I mean, and that's true of the game sector as a whole. You know, it's the same with design. It's the same with games tech as well. You're constantly learning new tools, different engines such as Unity, Unreal, and different versions of those engines. And so it is important to be flexible. You know, we do sometimes get people like you say come to us and like oh I'm used to using this tool and I want to use it for everything and it's it, it, it's great to be passionate about a certain you know a certain piece of software and to be skilled with it but also yeah you, we want you leaving here being um, oh, what's, what's the word I'm after like resilient you know that's what we want we want people who can adapt quickly yes. work with different software work with different team members of different skills and if you can do that then you're going to have a good time but you learn that over the course of the time that you're here at uni as well don't you you know so you know, it's, it, it is part of it. Definitely. We're getting people proper nice and murdered, aren't we now? <laughs> we, we get, I, 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 no, that's it, get, blast him. Get to blast him. Are, are one of those on our side, or does it, I mean, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> right, I mean, yes. <laughs> Just kill everybody, apparently. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. That's fine. It's going to completely uh, ignore what's going on for a moment. You know, yeah. Some might, people might call this an RPG, but you don't need the story. You just you just a you just a town of sorcerer actors with fire hands, blasting fools, lock picking. There you go. Yeah. Love to see that. That's Fallout Four. You know, or it was used in Fallout Four. Weirdly, I remember this bit. The lock picking or this part like of the game. Like this part of the game, like this yeah. this room. Yeah, it's right, just yeah. come back to me. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. I think I've probably played the start more than any other part of this game for mods, for the purposes of just like, oh, here's some mods. I'll try them out and then go Definitely. back into it. I don't know about you, but every time I reinstall Skyrim, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll see what I was doing last time I played, and then I think, nope, let's, yeah. let's, I, I've forgotten now, let's just start again. I'm like, that was so many games, though. I'm halfway through Cyberpunk, I'm halfway through The Witcher, there's so many games like that where I'm just like, I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> um, but never mind, never mind. Um, again, then, back to students momentarily. So, do you know any sort of examples like where our students tend to go, sort of career-wise, or you know, in, indeed like you know, company-wise, or any sort of high-profile ones that sort of spring to mind? Uh, so company-wise, like if you, yeah, if you know off the top of your head. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I do tend to find that uh, it depends on the company uh, that year because obviously sometimes you find that if they've got more funding, they'll fund more like apprenticeships um, and obviously they'll have more junior roles available perhaps more than other years. Mm. So um, obviously I'd only be talking from a past perspective. So if I was to say this, it's probably outdated now. Sure. Yeah. Um, but obviously you do tend to find that it's like places like Riot and Rockstar um, tend to have quite a few like options within you know, at uh, junior roles, I tend to find um, places like Rare do mm. really good apprenticeships as well. Yeah. Um, and I know that they've been very highly rated, uh, but there's so many like places out there that obviously, I mean, there's, there's plenty of things that you can do as well with this degree. It's not necessarily a like games industry and that's it. Mm. Um, obviously, like myself, I stayed in education. Um, and that was my career route, mm -hmm. and I've ended up now doing a PhD, but in games. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I've continued with that. And um, there's obviously many different ways that you can obviously teach games, um, and there's many ways that you can obviously get involved with kind of like um, you know VFX animation and stuff without cool. it being related solely to a game. You know, yeah. there's a lot of different places that need that skill. Film and TV, absolutely. Exactly. You know, you're, you're, all, you know, you're starting to see use of Unreal Engine and. In TV, you know, and, and creation art series and stuff as well. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it isn't just games. And there's so many more companies than there was, I can say when I did it, but we're going back too far there, <laughs> but a long time ago. Um, yeah, uh, but there's so many, you know, because we're in Staffordshire, obviously, and like, well, we've got places up on our doorstep now, we which do. back in the day, it was, you know, off, the, off you go to London and that's a lot. But, yeah. you know, there's so many places sort of in, nearby, which is awesome. You got any examples, Jennifer? Of um, companies or yeah, roles, if not companies, of like what people tend to go into that you've maybe supervised. Uh, yeah, so I've had students in the past who've gone off and they've gone into you know junior art roles at various different places. You know, but there, there are certain companies that will specifically have more junior roles than others. Mm -hmm. So you know, like Emma said, Rockstar generally tends to be hiring quite often. So mm -hmm. a lot of our grads tend to go that way. You know, I had friends who were studying alongside me who went straight to Rockstar. Mm -hmm. Um, I've known people to go to Playground, I've known people to go to Rare, Codemasters. Um, there's a lot of mobile companies in the UK as well. So, of course. You know, one, um, one of my good friends, he took a job at Pixel Toys fresh out of university. He was there for a few years. So, um, do, do you want survival mode, yeah or nay? Um, I, I don't know. What does survival mode do? I know, it, I know there's a paragraph there that tells me. So basically... You need to eat, sleep and stay warm. Yes. So that's, that's a lot of effort. There that's is. like a time I might just say no for the sake of this one. Yeah, let's not worry about that. But, let's just get, so. just carry on with the blasting. We'll just, just keep okay. blasting. All right. So now we have finished the intro. Okay. Someone else want to play for a bit? Yeah. You can have a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Here's what I want to see, Emma. I want you to find the first wolf you can, and just blast it. And I say this as a dog lover, but like. I mean, I I have a dog myself. Indeed. So. Yeah. That's, that's good. So just. <laughs> I can't see any wolves at the moment, but... It's fine. It doesn't have to be a wolf. I said wolf. I'm not, you know... No, it's got to be a wolf now. Okay. <laughs> fine. Fine. Normally you can find them just by following roads, because they tend to spawn alongside them. That's all good. I love how much you know about the game. I absolutely <laughs> adore it. Like, I'm fascinated. I didn't pick Skyrim because you were on this episode, but, I mean, that's serendipitous, isn't it? Here we are. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's worked out really well. Am I allowed? One thing I love when this game came out was the snowy aesthetic. Like it, it was, you know, I know, I, I know it's aged pretty badly, but um, like just there was something about it when it first came out, just running around like in this cold environment that was quite, quite unique for the time with these sort of games. I, I quite enjoyed. It. You've gone back to the base. I have, haven't I? You've gone back to Helgen. Yep. <laughs> Can she do that? Is that even allowed? Yep, that's fine. I break all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> right there, you go. I wonder if I can just... Whilst Emma's just torching these guys, Jennifer, <laughs> just, just, just starting bother, you got any examples of like great student projects you've seen, maybe final year project dissertations or maybe collaborative work, anything that springs to mind? So yeah, so this year, um, just the collaborative projects we're working on at the moment, you know, I'm supervising on four teams mm. and each of them have made very distinctive games that are looking quite exceptional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they look uh, quite cute, they're all fun to play, they're all kind of experimenting with different mechanics. So that's been, you know, very good to see. But yes, now I've had students who, you know, they've worked on these final year projects and gone straight into industry roles. Last year I was supervising a student and she was working on Groomart. 
So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she wanted to learn about rendering hair for game characters. Mm. And she did such a fantastic job of it that she finished her degree and she's now over at Airship as a groom artist. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. That's <gasps> awesome. Blasting! Doggy! Oh wait. That's not a wolf, that is a dog. Okay. A dog. Oh, it's a dog. I'm not then. killing a dog. <laughs> can, can you pet the dog in Skyrim? Can I? Can I? Can, I don't know if... Uh, I'm those not hands sure aren't set version. to pet. Those hands are set to electrify and they, catch, yeah. set it on fire. Oh, look. He's a human. Yeah. <gasps> what a cutie. Wonderful. Oh, look. I can't That is that. a great shot, I think, for us to finish on. I think let's wind it up with you looking at the dog. Yeah. And no, zero blasting. Zero. Zero oh, blasting. look at the good boy. <laughs> oh. All right. On that note, thank you very much for joining us, folks. Uh, remember, if you uh, if you enjoyed that and you want to watch some more of it, there are a bunch more episodes like this on our YouTube channel. So why not go and give them a quick look? Otherwise, that's uh, thanks for me and thanks to our brilliant guests. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>